Good afternoon, everyone. Hope you're having a fantastic Wednesday. Um, I have another problem here for us that involves blocks, but it's pretty short and sweet. There's only two parts to do, so that's pretty nice. And I figured this might be helpful to those of you who are maybe stuck on this particular problem, or you want a little more practice with free body diagrams and kinetic friction stuff. So let's see how this one operates. Here we have a block with weight 3w sliding down an inclined plane with a slope angle of this value at a constant speed while a plank with weight just w rests on top of that block. And as you can see here, the plank is attached by a wire to the wall. And here are the two parts. Part A, draw a diagram of all the forces acting on the block. Okay, so that's just a free body diagram of the block. We can do that, easy enough. Uh, part B, however, wants us to figure out the value of the coefficient of kinetic friction if it's the same everywhere on all these surfaces. So, okay, interesting challenge. Uh, there's nothing out of the ordinary here that requires any special setup, but I do want to point something out in case you missed it, and it comes in the form of these two words right here. We're being explicitly told that the block is moving at a constant speed. So you know what that means. The block experiences no acceleration as it slides down. Um, the same goes for the plank, since that's not moving either, but I just wanted to point that out. I think that's important. Uh, we'll see that come into play here soon. Let's start things off with part A, the free body diagram of the block. So as we've done quite a few times now, our first step is to include a coordinate system somewhere in our work. It doesn't really matter where. Here, uh, I'm going to put it off to the side so we have more room to draw stuff on the slide here. Uh, I've drawn the x-axis at an angle, as you can see here which represents movement along the surface of the inclined plane. Uh, the y direction doesn't change from what we're used to. Okay, If you move perpendicular to uh, the inclined plane upwards, that's plus y. Okay, Pretty easy to understand. So if you didn't put your coordinate system on your object and you did it off to the side like me, let's go ahead and put one on here now. Um, we can start adding forces at this point. And the first one I'm going to start with is the block's weight, which is going to point straight down. Next, in the plus y direction, is the normal force of the inclined plane pushing up on the block, and I'm just going to call that n sub block. Now, pay close attention here because we do have another normal force to account for, and this comes from the plank pushing down on the block as it sits on top of it, which is represented by this normal vector in the minus y direction. It's not a weight vector because weight only applies to uh, the object we're investigating. And we're not investigating the plank right now, we're investigating the block. So it has to be a normal force. And that is it for the y direction. In the x direction, we're going to have two different kinds of kinetic friction acting here because the block is touching two different surfaces, the plank and the inclined plane. So let's start off with the friction resulting from the plank rubbing against the block as the block slides downward. Remember that friction points in the direction opposite to motion, and since the block is the only thing moving here down this inclined plane, our kinetic friction has to point in the opposite direction, which is minus x. Um, our other frictional force um, comes from the interaction between the plane and the block, like I said before. Since the block is three times larger in weight than the plank is, and that the frictional force will depend on the normal force of the block, which is related to the block's weight, I've gone and drawn this frictional vector larger as well. Okay? Um, the weight of the plank, again, is just W whereas the weight of the block is 3w, and since the kinetic frictional stuff is related to weight, we would expect this vector to be a little bit longer. Uh, one last bit of housekeeping here involves breaking down this weight vector. 
because it doesn't directly lie along the minus x, or excuse me, the minus y axis. Forgive me. Uh, I'll insert our incline plane angle here, and the cosine and the sine components of that weight vector appear in these places. And that is everything that we need to include for the answer to part A. There's no acceleration, remember, so we don't have to include that off to the side. This is everything. Now, although the problem didn't specifically tell us to do a free body diagram of the plank, uh, we're going to have to do so anyway. Um, otherwise, we don't have enough information to solve part B, as you'll see in a couple minutes here. For the most part, things are pretty similar. Okay, The coordinate axis goes onto the plank, and the plank's weight points straight down, and there's a normal force for the plank, which is resulting from the block pushing up on it. Okay, cool. In the x direction, it's pretty obvious that there's going to be some sort of tension involved because, remember, there's this wire attached to the plank on the right-hand side of it. So let's go ahead and stick that on there. Thankfully, there's only one frictional force that we have to deal with because the plank is only touching one thing, the block. Remember, the plank doesn't move at all, though. It's the block that moves underneath it down this inclined plane. So that means that the frictional force acting on the plank is still going to be opposite the block's motion, so in the negative x direction, like this. Finally, we decompose this tiny little weight vector like we did with the block before. Uh, I'll insert the angle in here, and out pops our cosine and sine components. So now the free body diagrams are done. Let's move on to the sum of forces so that we can now answer part B. And I'll start off with the block here. Uh, you'll notice that some of the labels have changed. I've had to truncate some of the subscripts so that it doesn't take up too much room. Wherever you see B, that means block. Whenever you see P, that means plank. So pretty easy there. Um, starting off at the top with the vector equation of Newton's second law. Here's what we have. And remember, our job is to work out the x and y chunks of that expression. So beginning with the x, uh, the sum of forces in the x direction, here is what we have. Okay? We have the sine component of the weight of the block, which points down and to the left, which corresponds to the plus x direction, so that's positive. And the two frictional forces point in the minus x direction, so of course they're going to be negative. And there's no acceleration uh, regarding the block's movement, so we get zero on the right hand side. That's pretty cool. The first order of business is to exchange these frictional forces with their definitions. Because remember, in part B, we want to solve for what the coefficient of kinetic friction is. So our job is to get at that uh, algebraically in this expression here. And also, since the coefficient is the same for all surfaces here, we don't have to label any kind of subscripts. It's going to be the same, so one less thing to deal with. Next, we can move both of these coefficient terms over to the right-hand side, like this. And since we want that coefficient, we can factor it out from uh, both terms and then divide both sides by the sum of the normal forces of the block and the plank, like this. And we have our coefficient expression now. Cool. Uh, we're approaching the end, getting close to being done here. Let's switch to the other direction and try to get an expression for the normal force of the block. Here's what we're working with. We have uh, the normal force of the block pointing in the plus y direction, and then these two other vectors, so the normal force from the plank, and then the cosine component of the block's weight pointing in the other direction. Uh, so that explains our left-hand side here. And then, of course, remember, no acceleration either direction, so we get a zero. Um, if I move the other two negative terms here to the side, I do get an expression for that normal force of the block, but it's the sum of these two things here. That's not super helpful at the moment because I don't know what the normal force of the plank is yet. Uh, but thankfully, 
we did the free body diagram of the plank so we can investigate that for clues, okay? So that's <laughs> the reason behind choosing to do that in the first place. Um, let's underline these two expressions here and come back to them in a little bit. First, we'll see what the plank has to offer. We have the same kind of approach here, you know, Newton's second law, vector version, up at the top, and we'll start in the x direction. So the weight of the plank uh, times the sine of our angle points down into the left, positive, and our other two terms in the opposite direction end up negative here. And remember, the plank doesn't accelerate in any direction either, so we get a zero. Cool. Now, um, I want to switch out this kinetic frictional force with the um, definition of it, like this. And the coefficient of kinetic friction is hanging out here, but the presence of this tension causes us some trouble. Because if you look back at that underlined equation that we had for the coefficient of kinetic friction, it doesn't care about the tension whatsoever. So this is kind of uh, misleading. It's junk. Uh, it's not telling us anything useful because it contains something that we don't know and we can't figure out based on what we were given. So let's just gloss over this for now and move into the sum of forces in the y direction. Uh, if this causes you some concern, don't worry. You don't have to use every single simplified equation in the sum of forces analysis. Uh, most of the time we do use all of them, but in this case, we won't, okay? We're going to be all right. Uh, when we switch to the other direction, here's what we have, okay? The normal force from the plank points in the plus y direction, and then, of course, uh, this bad boy, the cosine piece of the plank's weight, points in the negative y direction, and equal to zero. So this is cool. Uh, here we get lucky. We get an exact representation of what that normal force is for the plank. So now we have something useful, okay? And I'm going to underline this one because we're going to bring all of those together. And let's start on a fresh slide and grab the first two equations that we underlined regarding the block. So what I want to do is first start with this expression here. What I've done is I have plugged in the expression for the normal force of the block in for NB right here. And next, we can drop these parentheses. We don't really need these anymore. So let's go ahead and do that. Notice we have two of the same thing in the denominator. So let's just write two of those plus this term here. Now the question is, didn't we just solve for what the expression was for the normal force of the plank? Yes, we did. It's this expression over here. The idea is that now I want to take this piece and plug it in down here, which will look like this. Okay. It doesn't look like we're necessarily getting anywhere, but check this out. There's a sign in the numerator and there's a cosine in each part in the denominator, which means I can factor the sine out in front and the cosine out in front in a denominator like this, which simplifies the expression a little bit. And I'm sure you can recall sine divided by cosine is tangent, okay? And here I've plugged in the weight of the block, 3w, and the weight of the plank as well as the weight of the block, into the denominator. Okay, so we have 3w over 5w. Okay, and since there's a w in the numerator and a w in each term in the denominator, well, I can factor out w's and get rid of those as well. So what am I left with? Well, I'm taking tangent of 36.9 degrees multiplied by 3 fifths. That's it. And if you plug this into your calculator, you'll get some really long number like this. And remember, we were only given three significant figures, which comes from the angle number, okay? So one, two, three, cutoff line ends after the zero, and four is less than five. So what is the answer for part B? It's 0 0.450. That is our final result, and we have answered both parts of the question.
I hope that this has helped. Take care, everybody.